that a good angle? Uh, I don't think so. Let's see if I can tilt that up a little bit. That looks a little better. All right. viewers that you're live but you didn't do that earlier because apparently a lot of people didn't see my uh my smash burger stream for whatever reason hello hello interesting username i saw it right right Half off brownies. You think they're gonna be any good? They're probably like day old. Oh, those are good. Those are nice and soft. Mmm. Man, yeah, those you popped in early. Everyone loves your username? Really? Is it is it Maz or Maze like the corn? I, my 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 head can is like Maz. Let's see, it's a medium. <clears throat> Maz first one. Day. Another medium. Let's see how many of these we can get done tonight. Large. And I'm working on the large. Okay, I got four belts, and I got four sets of D rings. What you doing? We're gonna be sewing. Scream soap? Are you are you telling me to scream soap? Because I'm in a parking lot and I think that's a bad idea. Short for Mazikeen. Something a uh, name I've heard before. How old are you? How old do I look? How old do you think I am? I'm just special like that. Yeah. At least your name's not like Destiny. Or Epiphany. 37? 30? Some good answers so far. Ooh, thank you. 42. You're giving away all the answers. Yeah, I'm 42. For a few more months. Do I like cheese balls? I mean, I mean like, uh, like the orange cheesy poofs? 42, yes. Am I single? Yes. Unless any of those redheads I was dating wants to take me back, I would let, gladly go back to them. Which you really shouldn't do. You're not 42, you're 34 max. <laughs> my knees, my back say otherwise. And I trim the gray hairs out of my beard. I gotta go sleep, but hopefully you have a good stream. Yeah, I'm gonna just be out here way at night sewing. It's nice and quiet. Price my beloved. Is that Halo? Oh, I thought maybe you were uh, Jordan. Commission's open. What do you commission? I'm a Mexican girl. I, haven't, I don't have a chance. I dated a Mexican girl once. Where'd you get your hat? This one I bought on eBay. from a uh, military surplus store. So it's this, this is the same manufacturer as the one that uh, they made in Vietnam. The color's different though. So in Vietnam, it was a more olive drab color. This one's a more green, which I like the olive drab better, but this matches my jacket very well. So you know, I guess it kind of goes better with the costume, but I would still prefer the darker OD. Captain Price, yes. Simon, hello, hello. Am 
remind me of your dad. Yeah, I get that a lot. Hopefully it's in a good way. I spent more time with my grandfather than my dad probably. Because my dad was working a lot and going to school at night trying to support the family and be better and he wasn't there a whole lot. Yeah, he tried, but he was an asshole. Can of beans. I only bought that can of beans because it was half off and I wouldn't have bought that normally. Uh, what was it like? It was like honey. I didn't even forget the flavor. I can go back and watch it live and figure out what it's about. Yeah, it was, it was a grill dinner. It was like beans and pickles for dinner. What did you eat earlier? I had a smash burger. Um, I had a little bit of oatmeal for breakfast. Stinky out here. Someone's probably smoking pot. It's by the kids by the ice cream shop. What am I sewing? I am sewing D rings onto a pistol belt. He's so hot. Looks good. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying. The ones that come out really good, I I make that for the uh, like the hero version, and the ones that kind of mess up on a little bit and they're like like cosmetic defects, I call that the stunt version, and I sell those a little bit cheaper. So if you want to save money, it's just like and you don't care about some minor cosmetic defects, you can save a few bucks. Man, that stinks so bad. Holy crap! Hello, hello. I want to know why people can smoke pot in a parking lot and the police won't arrest them. But if I drink alcohol in a parking lot, I'll get arrested. Right? That doesn't make any sense to me. My neighbor is outside her yard smoking too. Yeah, I think probably the worst time was like when I had neighbors that were next door and were upwind because wind generally blows from west to east here. And they were, like, they were the, the next building to the west. And I think it was like, a, it was like a beautiful spring day. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna wash these like big blankets and like hang them outside to dry. So I took some parachute cord and I ran across the backyard fence made, to make like clothesline. And I hung up like a, like, like a big blanket and a poncho liner and some other stuff just to hang out there in the sun and the, and the light breeze. And at the end of the day, I came back to, to pull my laundry off the line and just like, like, ugh, everything stunk so bad because they, they were smoking in the backyard and it, like the wind just blew and it just got in all my laundry. And I'm just like, oh, everything stinks. Just like, ugh. So I had to wash everything again. So annoying. I mean, like, the weird thing is, like, cigars actually smell good, but cigarettes smell bad. I don't know. What, why is that? Like, are they putting, like, nasty chemicals in cigarettes, but not in cigars? 50-50 can smell? Depends what you're smoking, yeah. smoke. I mean, the real issue with me is I'm allergic. So, not only does it smell bad, but also like burns my eyes. Burns my nose.
allergic. You're allergic too? It's really uncommon. What's your favorite drink? Pear cider. But also Guinness. I mean, not all pear ciders are very good. Um, I would say Guinness is better than a lot of pear ciders, but like things like a Woodchuck is the company that makes the pear cider I like. That's the best. I could drink that like all day forever. Which is something to say because like no stations in Missouri, the only thing they had was Coors Light, Budweiser, and Blue Moon, and I drank Blue Moon for like two months and I got sick of it. I got sick of quite a few alcohols actually. But for some reason I could just like drink Guinness forever. I could drink like uh pure cider forever. Smoking in public places should be illegal. Yeah, you know, the people that advocate for, like, uh, smoking have always been like, you know, it's the privacy of your own home or the privacy of your own property. We should be able to do what we want to do. And I'm just like, well, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. You have a good point. And then later I learned that I'm allergic. So I'm, I suffer every time I go in public where people are smoking. like people want to invite me to like a concert and it's just like I don't want I really don't want to go because I know I'm going to have an allergy attack and my eyes are going to hurt my nose is going to hurt it's going to burn I'll enjoy the music but I won't enjoy the allergic reaction and then afterward all your clothes stink just like I'd come home and try to lay in bed and sleep and have my, my have a headache and it's just pounding I can't sleep um, then everything stinks so then like I Go put my clothes in the wash immediately. Then the washing machine's making a noise. Just like, just a all, all around bad experience. Just like, I'll have fun at, at the concert, but then I'm just like miserable like all night long because I can't sleep because I've got a headache. But I'm going to wash the clothes because they smell so bad. real because we four years ago so we like it stinks so bad i mean like i was saying like i don't know why like cigars aren't bad like if you're going like we're going out with the boys and they're all around the campfire and they're drinking whiskey smoking cigars it actually smells okay or it might even smell good but when it comes to like cigarettes cigarettes just stink so bad or if you're smoking the other thing it's even worse there you nobody smokes where i live So I sewed that. I'm gonna bring the light in so you can see it a little better. So I sewed that together and I sewed uh, three runs. So that is on like really tight. Then later I'm gonna come back with a soldering iron and clean that up. So this strap supports 2,000 pounds, so I should be able to put 2,000, like this D-ring, I don't know what that would break at, but I should be able to put 2,000 pounds on this belt, and it shouldn't break. So, I would think, like, somebody gets shot, you, you grab their harness, and you pull them, and it's also on this belt, and you should be able to pull somebody on the ground with all of this. dad's making you get a job while doing school I did that my parents didn't make me get a job but I kind of had to because they weren't going to pay for my vehicle so I had to buy my own gas and pay for my own insurance and stuff so I had to get my own car to drive back and forth to school because they they stopped driving me to school when I got a car so I had to drive myself but then I also had to pay for it so I had to get a job so like a roundabout they forced me to get a job with extra steps Cigars use raw tobacco, cigarettes use process, that's why it smells worse. I mean, yeah. Where did you learn this? Where did I learn what? Sewing? Um, I don't claim to be good at it. But in Boy Scouts. Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts. And the interesting thing is, um, we had to do it in the Marines too. And the way that they teach you to sew with the Marines is they just give you everything and yell at you until you do it. So guys like me, 
who know some basics of sewing how to show other guys how to sew. So I got one loop hanging out. I'm gonna put this needle through the loop. I don't know if you can see that. I sure as heck really can't even see it. That's why I got a fingernail here so I can get through that. So I opened up the thread putting the needle through that. So now when I pull on the needle, it's gonna go through this loop and it's gonna close on itself. And it's kind of tight, so I've got some pliers just in case. I missed. All right, so I gotta come back and do it again. There we go. That would make sense. So now even though I only have a needle through it, it's it's caught on itself. What are you doing in the parking lot? I'm working out of the back of my truck. It's, it's, it's quiet out here. Chat finally turned angsty. What? I was missing, I was struggling here. I, I missed I missed chat. Did y'all see there was a uh, Twitch streamer that was denied jury duty? As soon as they found out she was a, she was a, a Twitch streamer, they kicked her off. Worried about you poking yourself? I've done that several times. As a matter of fact, I've stabbed myself so hard with this, I couldn't pull it back out, which is why it's extra handy to have the pliers here. Because a couple of times I had to grab the pliers and pull it back out. Why? I, why did I stab myself or why did she get kicked off jury duty? She got kicked off jury duty because she's a Twitch streamer. That makes no sense to me. I mean, I didn't read the whole article. But, um, during the jury selection process, they can kick you off the jury for various reasons. Either the judge can kick you off or either, um, either attorney, I think, can. Prosecutor or defense both have some leniency on who, who, uh, it's on the jury. I mean, because it's supposed to be a jury of your peers, right? But of course, that doesn't happen. That's so weird. I was supposed to be on a, a murder trial. And I unfortunately got pretty far in the process. And then they asked if... Uh, If you're, if you ever witnessed um, or su were subject to police misconduct, <laughs> and then, oh boy, 
that I started talking about that. And they didn't even let me finish. And they're like, yeah, we don't need you. You've ever yet to have jury duty? I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with jury duty, uh, except they pay you like $15 a day. Then they charge you $15 to park in the parking structure. So, like, what are you supposed to do? Are you, uh, like, how am I supposed to make money? Like, we have to go to work? I'm not supposed to... Get, I mean, legally, your employer has to give you time off work, but just, like, uh, am I supposed to take vacation time? Burn up all my, my PTO? Wait, you get paid to do your... Yeah, you get paid, like, $15. So... I did. I mean... The, the $15 fee for jury duty was set forever ago. And they just never raised the prices. So you go back to the 1800s, $15 is a good amount of money. So you probably wouldn't mind being on jury duty. Uh, now in the 21st century, $15 is like lunch. They're, they're paying you to park and the parking should be... Yeah, yeah the parking should be free. Because it's public parking for a public service. I mean, you can say the same thing about a college, too. I mean, you're already paying to go to college, right? They also pay for the parking, right? $15 is barely lunch. I mean, $15 like 10 years ago, last time I had to go to jury duty. You could, you could buy lunch for like seven, eight, nine bucks, but you're hard pressed now. I had to pay seven dollars for two bottles of water, oh my god. That's why I keep a canteen in my in my truck in my day day pack. So like when I'm hopping on a flight, people are like, oh, I'm gonna give you advice for for you know flying. Just like you can't bring water in, but once you're inside the secure area, then you can buy a bottled water, then you can drink it and just keep it and refill it. And then you're okay. And I'm just like, yeah, well, you know, I have a plastic canteen. And I just put a canteen in my gear and I just walk in and then fill it up. <laughs> and, they're just, and they're looking at me like, like, yeah, man, I, I've flown and I have some ideas and I'm not going to buy water when I have a canteen. You had the cops at your house today? That's probably not a good thing. Oh, no, don't drink water. Don't drink that water from, from what, the airport? We drank some nasty stuff in the military. That's all they had at the store. I mean, bottled water really isn't all that better. I mean, depends. PG water, don't drink that. Oh, that water tastes so smooth. Are you kidding me? What's wrong with Fiji water? And now, because these can slide back and forth on the belt, I'm going to put a thread through one of those grommets and then tie it off. My grandma only buys Fiji water? I mean, it's, it's expensive. But, ooh, that's tasty. It tastes so soft. Yeah, it's, got, it's full of uh, silicates. You usually drink to Asani. That's like, uh, I think like Pepsi is uh, the parent brand. Just like, too bad that, that light is just behind me. Asani is so much worse. It tastes like plastic no matter what I, I buy it whatever form I buy it in, it just... Ugh, oh, so much lens flare. That or Deer Park. I cannot drink certain brands of water because they taste metallic. I can't drink certain things because they taste like plastic. Just like, eh. I never even heard of Deer Park. It must be like a local or something. 
the sand's literally tap water bottled. Yeah, but they, they do like filter it. Whenever I get a chance, I order a uh, water from a Starbucks because they filter it five times and uh, it's pretty, I guess it depends where you go, but obviously we need good water to make good coffee. So if they were using crappy water, it'd come out on the taste of the coffee. So to be consistent, they have some pretty serious filtration systems in all their stores. So if you order a water from Starbucks, it usually tastes pretty good. And the neat thing about water from Starbucks is it doesn't leave water spots. So I'll, I'll grab one of their waters, use it to clean off my solar panel, and it doesn't leave any water spots on the solar panel because there isn't any minerals in it. Because <laughs> if there was minerals in the water, it chemically react with the coffee, but it, it would taste funky. Why do different brands of waters have flavors? This isn't okay, it's water. It all depends on the minerals. Starbucks water tastes like cold. Yeah, too complicated. Ooh, one time I got the needle up under my fingernail. Oh, that was bad. Like I, I jerked back and people saw me. Cold water effects taste different. Had needle go through my finger, yeah. Once. Yeah, don't do that. I just cringe out. Yeah. Pure life water is the only water I can drink because the rest tastes metallic and stuff. I can get that. You ever try uh, Liquid Death Mountain Spring Water? This is why I get Duncan's coffee. even heard of Target? What? It tastes like dirt to you? Mountain spring water tastes like dirt? I mean, it should taste like rocks, if anything. Not dirt. Can't drink certain waters because of pots. What? I heard that before, but I don't know what pots is. Big liquid death will pregnant and broke some necks. <laughs> I mean, who's next did you break? You used to eat rocks, so yeah. Have you seen Buddy Throws Captain Price cosplay? Um, I think like a month or so ago I, I saw it, but I haven't seen it lately. I haven't seen any of his stuff lately. I, uh, algorithm's not kicking me over to his page. But he's in my Discord. And I sent him some stuff, too, for his Captain Price. I drank paint dinner in art class. I think everybody kind of tasted the paint thinner in art class because you put you put your paints in it and it turns pretty colors. You're like, ooh, I want to drink that. You take a sip and it's just like, Ugh. People were like, should we be drinking while pregnant? I'm like, it's water. I mean, honestly, that's that was the original intent of their brand was people who didn't want to drink or isn't to drink water at a party or whatever. So they wanted cool looking cans so it looked like it was alcohol. I drank the peat butter because I thought it was lemonade. Oh, you thought it was lemonade? Oh, I seen, um, I even like, like people that are like well-established artists and stuff, so they'll like have like a coffee next to their paint and they'll accidentally drink their paint. Even if it's like watercolor or, uh, Or oil with thinner and stuff. It's so smooth too. Love liquid death. Yeah, it's good. Oh, the way you spit out and ruin your drawing. Oh no. So that one, I went inside the grommet, put a loop through, come back out, tied it off. So now. This doesn't move side to side. It's it's fixed. 
But I gotta do that to this next one, because this next one can slide. It'd be nice if I was doing this at a desk with like, you know, multiple camera angles so you can see what I'm working on and also uh, see my face. But that's more like a Twitch streamer or an OBS. It's going to fight large eating cricket. There's like cricket candy. Got that pots buddies. I still don't know what, what pots is. My baby is crackling and watching you. Oh. Hopefully don't lose that. I love crickets, they taste so good. I mean lizards love crickets. So they gotta taste good, right? That's probably their favorite food, next to like mealworms. But of course, mealworms are crickets. They're just like the larvae stage. But you know what? I save crickets when I can. Like if I see them inside a building, I'll, uh, I'll grab them and put them outside. Yeah, a scorpion once tail barb was removed it was surprisingly good I mean I've only seen it in movies I was like no thank you I think eating a whole animal is weird I'm mean, just like because when we eat like cows and chickens and pigs we're slicing a piece of the animal out and then we're cooking that and eating that so eating a whole animal you're eating like the digestive system with like any poop in their intestines and their stomach acids and all their, all their organs. I'm just like, no, thank you. That's, that's weird. All right, so that's done. And that's done. I think it's better if we use as much the animal as possible. I mean, yeah, but uh, nothing goes to waste anymore. All the different grades of meats go to different places. And then whatever else left over that goes like the dog food, animal feed, or fertilizer. So. I mean, it doesn't make financial sense to waste stuff. Like one time there's really any massive waste it was like in the early days of uh, industry when things were just getting underway and stuff was wasted like nowadays everything gets used up because everything can uh, can be a profit what I'm working on I'm working on a belt I'm attaching uh, d-rings to the back of it So like a crazy thing, like when cars were first made, everything was diesel. And when uh, people were extracting oil from the ground and making fuel, it was basically just using diesel. And gasoline was a byproduct. And gasoline was considered so explosive and so dangerous that they, they thought people couldn't use it as a fuel. So that was dumped into massive fields and often set on fire. And like nowadays, gasoline's considered the main fuel and diesel's kind of a byproduct. So more gasoline's made than diesel and diesel's generally cheaper. So that's, I just think that's wild how so much gasoline was just burned off as, as a waste product in the, uh, the early days of, uh, of oil fields. Gasoline smells good out in a white gas. 
reminds me of one of the uh, the memes rolling around now. It's like girls searching for a deodorant. It's like lavender and flowers. And guys searching for a deodorant. It's like gasoline and sharks and gunpowder. You mean to do strange things? Yeah. You have to go to your mom's house this weekend. I'm not looking forward to it. Uh, you're, you're not good with your mom, or the house sucks, or it's in a bad neighborhood. So there's a little bit of a burr on these buckles, because they are brand new. So I'm taking that little bit of a burr off. So it's, when the customer gets it, it's not sharp. Her boyfriend creeps me out and mom is racist towards <laughs> uh, So when I was younger, my mom's boyfriend um, tried to kill me. And I went to the police and I went to the front of the police station. I waited around for like an hour before anybody else came out to talk to me. And then they're like, well, you know, you don't have any bruises. You don't have any visible injuries. And there's no visible damage to your truck, so we can't do anything. I'm just like, thanks, police. Are you okay? Oh, this is like 20 years ago. So the guy stole a bunch of my stuff. And uh, after finding out other things over the course of time, it seems like my mom was lying to him about me. And that's why he came after me. It's like, oh. How do you even recover from that? Yeah, you really can't. Please stop showing my mom that as long as she leaves no physical injuries that she can beat me yeah you know uh i don't think police should be uh giving that up as advice even though that's basically how they work that's like the litmus test of the law which it shouldn't be cool that's done and i'm gonna come back later and Probably tomorrow with the soldering iron and then clean up all these little loose threads and melt them down. Then this belt will be done. Please you labor horrible. You know, the only time I've heard of people that actually have a good relationship with police, like don't actually need police. It's like, oh no, the police over here are great. Like that's because they don't bother you and you're not in a crime area and nothing really happens. Dragged you out of school multiple times in the ninth grade. Yeah, I, I don't even know why police are in uh, high schools nowadays. It doesn't seem to be uh, working out very well. Or middle schools, too, I guess. Welcome to America. Yeah. Oh, thank you. They have police in elementary and middle schools? For what? Are elementary school kids that out of hand? You need police there? <coughs> All they do is stress us out. Yeah. See, my idea was um, instead of having police in schools, have a couple of uh, retired Marines. Or not, you don't even have to be retired. Just have a couple, have a, like a couple Marine Corps veterans hanging out at the schools. So they will have no legal authority to detain you or to arrest you. There, they will only be there. In case a bad guy comes in and they will definitely handle the bad guy appropriately and uh, they can also be there to you know help get along with students and be like a mentor Marines are scary I'm a marine you saying I'm scary I mean 
who protects embassies around the world? Marines. Who protects the president? Marines. I mean, you post a couple Marines up at every school, you're not going to have any more problems in schools. Your police school officer was admit he was nice, but he treated, he threatened to shoot a girl during a fight. Yeah, that's not cool. But of course, now with the political situation, you got uh, even like Marines defending themselves are getting arrested. So like the uh, the guy in the subway in New York, uh, the Marine pinned him and choked him out, and then he died. Like, whoops. And then now the Marines are getting uh, criminal charges. I'm just like, gotta be careful trying to even defend yourself. Or defend someone else. I mean, but that's where we're trained to take people out as quickly as possible. I mean, if I had the option, I'd put kids into uh, private schools or homeschooling because public schools are getting so freaking horrible. Not to have like a downer conversation, but just like that's the way it's going. I kind of just want to like be out here late at night. A nice cool evening with the crickets and doing some sewing. I got some brownies too. A lot of cops are veterans. I'm sure that's most of them. Uh, just the nature of being in the military and being a veteran, we shouldn't be law enforcement officers because law enforcement is supposed to enforce the law and veterans are not trained to enforce the law we're trained to kill and disable as quickly as possible and that's a whole different mindset and i don't think we should be uh enforcing laws within states we kill people and break things as a job so that's just you know, the nature that's not what cops are supposed to do you're not supposed to kill people and break things cops are supposed to catch people and bring them to court for justice we got Captain Price's live again. <laughs> Luckily, my mom refused to let me go back to public school. Online schooling is much safer for me. I didn't even know that was an option. But, yeah. I mean, I did online courses for my college to get some extra credits. Uh, before I joined the military. So I was cranking out some more college credits. So that I could get um, a contract to up my contract to another pay grade. Price is the only thing my boyfriend hears about when he's alive. Oh. That's, maybe, that's maybe a little uh, TMI. Where I used to live, a majority of the PDs were veterans. So that's a really iffy thing because you could have. Uh, Either they could be like really cool or pretty messed up. But like I said, like I definitely don't recommend people go that way. Interesting thing is in my hometown here, like one of my buddies was trying to get in to be a police officer here and he couldn't because basically if you're in the military, you get fast tracked. So if they opened up three positions, only veterans were getting in. So the guy literally joined the army so that he could be in the army for a few years and then come back here to be a police officer. These are really good. Almost as good as homemade. Grocery store stuff is like hit or miss. But for whatever reason, their brownies and their cheesecake is just so good. But everything else is kind of bleh. Mm -hmm. Like almost as good as I can make it. Those beads are looking so edible right now. Beads? Well, like, like... The, uh, like, the zipper thingies. Don't know by you. Oh, the beads. Like, you're working on stuff, too? Yeah. You make better brownies? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, I've definitely had worse brownies, but these are, these are pretty good. Going dark soon. I finished one belt, got three more to go, so 
I'll probably be live for like an hour. I mean, when I sit in front of a computer and get these things done in like half an hour. I think like an hour to half an hour. You want to eat your Poison Ivy Funko Pop? <laughs> All right. Here are the D-rings I made uh, earlier. Make sure you take breaks though. That's what I'm doing with the biting the brownies and taking a sip of my my beverage. Captain Price eating contest. That sounds unhealthy. On the train to school. For a while I had to take a my truck broke down is in the transmission shop I had to take a train to work. So I uh, I took BART, which is kind of like a like a light rail kind of train, over to like an actual train station. And I had to take a real train to get to a stop, and then walk like three blocks to work. That was rough. I'd fall asleep on the train a lot. Missed my stop like twice. It was late to work a couple times. Chloe, I walked by the work where. Uh, Chloe works. So there used to be a waitress, uh, Chloe, that worked at the pub, and then she went to the pizza place instead after working at the pub for like 10 years. And I walked by the pizza place. I didn't go in and I was like, oh, Chloe works there. I follow her on Instagram. Bet she's got a boyfriend. I resist eating cupcake wrappers, but every time I fail, I've eaten uh, a couple of bits of those by accident a couple times. Do you ever have your dogs get into the cupcakes and they eat the whole cupcake and the cupcake wrapper? <laughs> eating the cores of apples? I did that once in the military because I was so hungry. I just ate the whole thing. You do it on purpose, not by accident. Extra protein. What? You mean the wrapper of a cupcake? I don't think there's protein in in paper wrappers. And eating the rinds of watermelon? Ew, gross, no. There's protein in the wrapper? No. Let me believe. Oh, okay, well, I'll let you. My husky ate a whole bunch of brownies and wrappers from firehouse subs when I was driving 18 wheelers. You have a husky? My uncle Bob had a husky. Probably two, but I was only old enough to remember one. And then my sister's best friend had huskies, only one at a time, but she had uh, two, Mia and Star. Then my sister had a husky. His name is Diesel. Uh, one of the huskies in Snow Dogs is named Diesel. Or is it Demon? Or is there a Diesel and a Demon? No, I think one of the Malamutes was named Diesel. You want a blonde husky? Like the light brown ones? One time I thought somebody's husky was a Shiba because I was walking by and it was so orange and so small. She gave me attitude, like, no, this is a husky. And then me and my friend looked at each other. I'm just like, that is the most orange husky I've just seen in my life. It was probably a mix. Definitely a redeeming, yeah. So, um, the same dogs that they used in Snow Dogs were the dogs that they used in uh, Eight Below, which is a very good movie, but uh, you'd probably cry. head in the bed. Can you say good night and good luck? Okay. Good night and good luck with school. Get some sleep. Work hard. What I miss? There's a movie with Diesel and another movie with Demon. I'll get to that. Yeah, so the, the two movies I think were both made by Disney or maybe 
there's the snow dogs, and then there's uh, Eight Below. And maybe, maybe it was two different movies with two different character names, or the dogs were named that, or whatever, I'm a little mixed up. So what I'm doing now is I'm marking the middle of the belt. Because I made a mistake before, so I came up with this idea. Where I put a thread in the middle of the belt. So now I know to attach the D-rings to either side of this. And then when I'm done, I come back and cut it off. Eight soda cans after I finish them, is that healthy? No. And you should probably see a doctor. I mean, I didn't name him Diesel after the movies. I named him because I was driving rigs. I mean, yeah. So we uh, pulled into a truck stop and all the, you know, trucker slang. The Marines were like, uh, what do we fill us up with? Because there was... Diesel wasn't marked as Diesel. There was a reefer. And people are like, what's a reefer? And I'm like, no, the reefer. <laughs> There's reefer, and then death, and then something else. And I'm like, well, obviously, uh, reefer, I'll look into that. Death is diesel exhaust fluid, don't touch that. And then whatever the other one was, fill up with that thing. And then later I learned that reefer was for the uh, diesel for the refrigeration. So there, that's just diesel with no tax on it. And it's just like, oh, okay, that makes sense because you want to fill up your generator to run your refrigerator for your trailer with diesel it doesn't have tax on it for no road tax because you it just saves money. And obviously, since we're in the military, I'm like, okay, since we're driving military trucks and we're not paying taxes and we're working for the government, we can go ahead and use the non-taxed diesel. Uh, to lower our costs for our budget because we're doing all these convoys we can spend less money on the road so we can fuel up with reefer so I had, I had to do all this research and then like present it totally did it on my own uh, took the initiative to do it so just like yeah that's let's fuel up with that it'll save some money on our budget and plus all the trucks we were driving were like way overweight for all the roads and we never stopped for the uh, the weight stations or the bridge tolls or anything There he is, police, get him. What, what, what? Oh, at Renmen? What do you say? You guys arguing in the chat again? I don't have any admins here. What's going on? Can we go to the store for snacks? I just came back from the store with snacks. I got brownies. Yes, yeah, off-road diesel, yeah. It doesn't have a uh, red dye in it, but even if it did, it didn't matter because we're driving military trucks. But uh, another neat thing is if you buy a military truck at auction, it might have red diesel in it. And then you could drive it off base and be driving it home and get pulled over and you get spotted with red diesel in your in your tank and now you're in trouble. Even though you just bought the truck and there's red diesel in the tank that you didn't put in there. So I always recommend to people, uh, plan to tow the vehicle off the property. It might not run, it might not start, the batteries could be dead, you might be on base trying to work on it, trying to get it to start, and of course it's not registered, not insured, so when you're buying it, it's just like there's no paperwork, you're just driving off with your bill of sale. So just always plan to tow it. And some guys are like, oh, but the trucks are too big. And just like, get a bigger truck, get a friend with a flatbed. Or flat tow it. DOT is a joke sometimes though. Yeah, I got stopped get, trying to taking my five ton on base because I bought a government liquidation uh, auction where I was buying a trailer. So I'm showing up in my truck to connect to a trailer to haul it off. I got stopped at the gate and DOT had to give me all their crap and I got held up for an hour and a half while they checked my license and checked the truck and gave me, and gave me nonsense. And they're like, you can't drive this truck on here because you don't have a Class A license, yada, yada, yada. And, you know, it's got air brakes. And I'm like, hold up. It doesn't have air brakes. It has hydraulic brakes. 
And he's like, you got an air system on here. I'm just like, yeah, but I mean, like even on the dash, it says use silicone brake fluid, dot number five. I'm just like, air brakes don't use brake fluid. I was like, well, let's go outside and walk around and I'll show you where all the hydraulic cylinders are. There's no air brakes on this truck. It has an air system, but that's to run the brakes on trailers. They're like, oh, you need to get the endorsement. So afterward, uh, I ended up doing the Troops of Trucks program to get my commercial class A. So now I did that just to avoid problems. So you get some officer, it's all DOT up, up, uppity. I could be like, here's my license, a license for everything. So whatever argument you have, there you go, class A. in the chat. So we've got to come on by, give me crap. Give me the brownie? Miss Weenie? Hmm. I got two more, come get it. glitter glue well if it's a stuff uh, made for kids it's made to be non-toxic because they might eat it so it has to be used to eat slime what Like the slime from a TV show, like a kid's toy slime, because that probably has to be non-toxic too. I remember there was like a slime toys in like the 80s and 90s. And the parents hated the slime toys because it would make a mess. Just do yourself slime. Like the, uh, the non-Newtonian stuff they make you make a school you're buying macro off a drink now what's going on oh the slime you'd make with elmer's glue i don't think i've ever made slime with elmer's glue that might be uh after my time made it once the teacher got mad at you captain I can explain tasted nasty anyway <laughs> you ate it make slime okay I mean there's there's a borax soap in like the elementary schools so I guess you can make slime at school but I don't think uh, I don't think you could shoot you be eating borax Yeah. 
I mean, it's edible in the sense you can put it in your mouth and swallow. <coughs> you love eating buttons? At least they're round. <gasps> JDM girl. You eat a button so big you choked? Children just like eating things. You guys are gonna get my, my life taken down for eating things you're not supposed to be eating or something weird. It was pretty and eating in my stomach. I think you're making that up. Do you say something funny? I missed it. I need to scroll back up. Children stop eating things. Oh, yeah. back well that's uh, good timing that you're back as we're talking about um, eating things putting things in your mouth and swallowing <laughs> you're not sharing Johnny who's Johnny It's a lot easier sitting down, drinking a coffee, watching the video, eating soap, candy, cardboard, paper, scorpion, scented markers, Elmer's glue, and more. You eat, you eat a scented marker, like the whole marker, or just like the the soft felt on the inside. You're eating markers. What the heck? Just the tip. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys are making that up. This dream got silly. The only weird thing you've eaten was toilet paper. You'd be surprised what us Gen Z will do. Uh, I've seen you guys eating Tide Pods. Didn't somebody die from that? That was your generation, people? I'm Gen X. Gen X wasn't eating Tide Pods. We don't even use Tide Pods. We use, like, the powder. Yes, they did. No way.
Maybe some millennials were doing it, but even when that thing was a fad, millennials were like in their th 30s, right? I mean, what, the youngest millennial right now is like, what, 28? Yeah, the oldest millennials right now are like 41. My generation scares me. I'm one of the smarter millennials. So you didn't get a student loan? My sister did. She's a, she's a, she was an older millennial. She was born in 82, which is like almost the cutoff. She got a student loan. They started calling me. My bed phone. Oh. <gasps> Thanks for the roses. You got nine of them. Oops, Is that, what do you mean oops? First thing I ate was uh, a person. I bit them, licked the blood. Yeah, uh, you probably need some help. Then again, you are on TikTok. I'll come be your seamstress. Are you actually a good seamstress? Because I need a seamstress. I got all sorts of stuff and I need to get sewn up. <gasps> My star, hello, hello. I've got a bunch of work on hold because I need an actual seamstress. Definitely. Um, one of the things I need made are um, helmet covers. So I made a my own. I have my own camo line, and I can't get stuff out. So I make helmet covers and uniforms. So pants and shirts and helmet covers. And helmet covers would be an easier thing to do because there's a couple strips all sewn together. But you need a you need a heavy duty sewing machine. I can do like heavier weight fabric. Not sure about the Tide Pods. Throw SmackRaff out the window. Yeah. What my start say? I think I missed it. What are you doing? I'm sewing. So I'm sewing on the pistol belt. I'm putting a D ring on it. So I I sewed uh, D rings into these straps. And I sew the strap around the belt so that it, I have D-ring attachments onto a pistol belt. And I'm doing it outside in the parking lot because it's quiet and cool. I have one that will do leather and heavy canvas. You might be the girl I need to talk to then. Cool and Cali. I mean, it is now. I put a jacket on, but it's, you know it is ten o'clock at night, so it kind of cooled off. It was really hot today. Seventy-three now. I just ordered a whole new roll of fabric.
so I got a bunch of uh, material. I order 10 yards, 20 yards, something like that. Kind of pricey. Praise the handyman. Pretty much. I can do a lot of stuff. Because uh, my grandfather taught me a lot of stuff. And he grew up uh, born in 1928. Is that right? That can't be right. Because he's an earlier two veteran, so I think it's I think it's 23, not 28. So I lived through, lived through the Depression, so obviously you need a lot of skills. So I got taught a lot of stuff. I'm back. Ooh, thank you. That's cool. Sent goggles. Believe everything you read on the internet, but like, uh, see all these articles about like millennials that want to rent a place rather than buy a place because they don't know how to fix things, they just want someone else to fix things for them. And I'm just like, really? It is so much more cost effective for you to fix stuff yourself rather than hiring somebody else to do it. But then also, like, when I rented a place and I had a landlord, and she always had some like sleazy guy coming over and just like I don't want some random guy coming on by and like looking at all my computers and all my military collectibles and all my antiques and like you know, casing the place to come back to steal stuff later which does happen I also want some random guys walking through looking at all my stuff and then I was never satisfied with the quality of their work They do such a crappy job, just get in, get out, do it as fast as possible, as cheap as possible, just to get paid. And I was like, you know what? Um, like, can I repair stuff myself and just take it off the rent? Because I'm going to do a better job than the guys you hire. And then, you know, I get it done faster because I can fix stuff the same day. And then, uh, Rather than call somebody and schedule an appointment and they come on out and it's like, it takes forever. Just do it myself. Try owning a farm. Everything needs to be fixed every day. Yeah, so um, I hopped on Craigslist and there's a farm that wants to hire a handyman. And I was thinking about applying there. And they also are renting a house. You get to live in a house and rent the house from them. I'm kind of questioning how that works. But they, they're, they're charging rent on the house. And I'm just like, are you going to be able to pay enough for me to cover the rent? Like, if I'm working on your farm and I'm renting a house from you on your farm, is, is your pay going to be enough to cover that rent? <sighs> Can I pet the cows? Yeah, um... You make friends with the cows, and then you end up eating them later, and it breaks my heart. <laughs> cows don't like pets? I mean, some of them do. But when you slap them and say, future cheeseburger, they get spooked and run away. <laughs> they love my pets. I mean, I had, I've had, like, a cow, like, lay in my... Like, lay down and put their head in my lap and I like pet them a little bit. I'm getting a cow soon, I'm so excited. My long horns, oh, well, there you go. Choo -choo cheeseburger. <laughs> I really think you were the actor, Captain Price, that you, no, I am not. Uh, Barry Sloan. I'm a little bit thicker. And I think he might be a little bit taller. But uh, that could be all camera angles. Helps my back pain sometimes. What? I, I missed something.
I'll tell you, I'm six foot, even. Uh, price in the game, according to like the stats, is like six one six two. We're talking about sleeping on the floor. It's like, how tall are you? Six feet. Like, how big are you? I'm six foot. No, laying down. Like, I'd like, no, in bed. And it's like, six foot, but sideways. I need to do the audio, but the audio is like five foot eight or whatever. I'm not five foot eight. Yes, Bryce, I'm a good boy. I'm 16. My body's deteriorating. Uh, you got, you got uh, some sort of uh, disorder, like a degen degen degenerative thing going on. Five foot. How are you so short? Short peak again. Is it like uh, like genetics or bad nutrition or something? Five two. I mean, but you don't look you don't look short. So like you're proportional. Is just Alex. Hello, hello. Five four, filled with love and rage. Yeah, how come all the short girls are so angry? It's because you can't reach the top shelf. Five five, nearly in the middle. No, that was foul price. Uh, don't even start. I mean, my ex was five foot eight, and she still couldn't reach the top shelf. And so, like, she'd be like trying to reach into the cabinet and like stretching up over the counter, and I'd always well, kind of like you know go go behind and kind of. <laughs> Cheap job. Five ten and still full of rage. And be a ninja. That was some tall cabinets then. I mean, the cabinets went to almost. I, I fit MRE boxes on top of the cabinets, and there was like a little bit of room before they hit the ceiling. So MRE box is like ten and a half inches. So it was probably like probably a full foot before the ceiling. So yeah, they were kind of kind of tall. But I liked it. So then you could put like the, the fancier stuff on the top shelf. And like your daily use on the bottom shelf. Just time my counters, yeah. something along and use it to get the item down that you needed. I mean, sometimes that's how you break things, too. Five foot two, we have 32 inch inseam. You know, um, I've got kind of like shorter legs and a longer torso, which. Obviously, uh, I would say is drawbacks because I can't really run that fast. Then I got back problems, and shirts are never long enough. But 
but apparently it's attractive. I don't know why. My mom said because I have long legs, you get taller. I've been five foot four for four years. The shorter legs, longer toes, so it makes me think of the three kids in a trench coat disguise. I mean, it's not, it's not comically disproportionate. It's only a matter of a few inches. So I'm gonna come break my back. Yeah, uh, I'm feeling like the, that TikTok audio I did right. I cracked my back by spinning. I'm like, I'm all tight right now. I need to like go lay down on a flat surface and stretch out. So I can break my back too. You mean crack your back or pop your back, not break your back. That's also why I got a cider too, because my back hurts so bad, so I grabbed a cider. I gotta find my Motrin. No, break it? Yeah. Hi guys, I'm back. Scarlet! Scarlet G.I. Joe? Full on break your back in half? What are you working on? I am adding D-rings to a uh, pistol belt. So I've got one done here. So pistol belt, buckle, right? And then I added D-rings to it with these little straps. So one inch tubular nylon, weigh over 2,000 pounds. I got a D-ring on it. Alcohol loosen things up, yeah. But if your back hurts, it only does so much. I break my back like a like a finishing move in Call of Duty. <laughs> I've watched a lot of those movies, but most of the ones Captain Price include that little hatchet. <laughs> I, I need to get that little hatchet. I need to figure out uh, like the make and model on that thing. I grab one of those, add that to my kit, and just like like when he like whacks the Russian and pulls him down and gives him a spin and finishing move. I had drugged by Young Horse yesterday. I'm ble feeling it. Oh. Hopefully you're wearing appropriate attire and you didn't get all uh, road rashy. Rather than like getting caught off guard and getting dragged around the arena. Like a sledgehammer. Yeah, I get... I'm not keen with having like magnets on me, but I do like the uh, that sledgehammer uh, breaching tool, they call it. And that's Modern Warfare 2, so I only kind of have like one costume, one skin for Modern Warfare 2. I'm really not even done working on that one. I like bears. My knees pop, but I can't pop it. Yeah, I got, I got that too. Like both my knees, they're kind of tight right now. I could probably get one to pop, but I'll wait for tomorrow. There are three for price on my Yeah, um, I think like the Dead of Night, like the all black. I don't think I, that's even possible. That's why I just got like all my tan gear over the, uh, the dark gray. Friends call me grandpa because my joints. Yeah, it's the same. I, I had that when I was younger. But I also played a lot of hockey, so that's probably what happened to me. 
like parents always pushing us to play sports and now I'm, I got all these injuries from all these sports. Seems like I would've been better off if I didn't play any sports. So I wouldn't have all these uh, little issues. It's 3.30 a.m., what? Go, go to bed, get a little bit of sleep before you go to school, Jesus. This is why I can't put my right knee. I pop more than pop rocks in the morning, yeah. Got, I'm Canadian, not American. What? Gotta wake up at six. Oh, that's so rough. Why you do that to yourself? Just go to bed. Go to sleep. Found out a few days ago I have family in Scotland. That's cool. You have to go to school in 20 minutes. You know, sometimes, like, Eden will pop in and chat, and, like, while she's going to work, she'll, like, uh, hop on my live and make a few comments. That's the only time a sheriff pops in, like, while she's on her way to work. We just got done with school. You're still live? Uh, this is my... This is my second live of the day. This live has been running for... One hour and 27 minutes. Looks like I'm halfway through my battery life. Still sewing. Got one belt done. And I'm working on my second belt and I got two more. So I'll probably get all these done tomorrow. I've also got some painting to do. As long as the weather's good out here. It's been fairly warm, pretty sunny, low humidity. That's why I'm doing some painting too. I'll watch your live at home at work to start back at your old job. Not your truck driving job. You're not be watching live TikToks while you're on on the road, right? It's 1 a.m. Y'all need to be going to sleep. Maybe I ought to like uh, start cutting the lives. Trying to force you guys to go to sleep. No, not driving. Community here is 92. Holy crap. That's like Atlanta, Georgia numbers. How do you even breathe? It's just like, you're just breathing in water. Unless you got some of those dehumidifiers in the your building you're in, there's like water is pouring out of them. It's high for us this time of year. It's actually not afraid to do that. Sounds like really mean. Oh, me cutting my life and going to bed and forcing you guys to actually get some sleep is mean. I was like at my job, I got this guy. He's like, oh, wait, what are you doing this weekend? What's going on? Where are you going? I was like, I'm not going anywhere. Like, what do you mean? You're like, it's the weekend. You gotta go, gotta go party. You gotta go do something. I'm just like, dude, I just wanna sleep. You got a three day weekend. I'm gonna sleep all day Friday. And Saturday, I'm gonna sleep in. Then I'm gonna go, you know, work a little bit on my my cosplay stuff and do some Etsy shop kind of things. And then uh, Sunday, I'm gonna sleep in, take it easy, maybe go to Starbucks and, and play some video games while I'm, you know, working on something else. And sleep some more. Like I want to go to sleep. I want quiet. I want to go out party. I'm gonna pull an all nighter. Why? That'd be so rude if you ended the live to force us to go to sleep. <laughs> Definitely a mom job. I, I missed something. Uh, I 
definitely screwed up these threads. They're not looking pretty. Now, one of the things I do when I'm working for myself is that when I start making mistakes, um, that's when I cut it. I hear a truck. Yeah, that's the uh, the guys that drive really fast and angry. They showed up to make a delivery. Took this week off, hired a hand for the week until he couldn't handle a young horse. I mean, if I get a job at that little ranch, the little farm thingy, they want me to work with livestock, it might be a bit much for me. Like, I can fix a lot of stuff, but dealing with animals, I mean, anything other than a dog and cat, it's just like, uh, I don't know if I can do that. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a ranch hand. Easy with livestock. I mean, if you say so, but to someone with no uh, no experience, no knowledge, I don't know. Yep, full open throttle. Boom, 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 boom. Hits the speed bumps. Two speed bumps. Hits the speed bump there. Hits the speed bump there. Does not come to a complete stop at the stop sign roars right through. That guy's beating the crap out of that truck. <laughs> Dude, if I if I were video recorded that and found out, you know, what company that guy works for, you'd probably get him fired. Just freaking destroying that vehicle. I mean, just a crappy delivery truck anyway. Maybe they bought it used and they don't give a crap. Like, at my old job, uh, they bought an Enterprise rent truck and I'm just like, really? Like, oh, we got it for like $24,000. I'm just like, really? That's a lot of money for a used truck. And a rental? Things beat the hell up. Send me a picture of the truck. I mean, it, there's no markings on it. Are you hugging Captain Price? What? <sighs> Come on out to a convention. I like people driving U-Hauls. Oh, God. Yeah. <sighs> it's like they drive cars their whole life, and then they get a U-Haul and think they can drive it like a car. It's just like, no, you're going to beat the crap out of that thing. You wish you can go to a convention so bad? Uh, what's stopping you? I mean, I used to get crap for going to conventions. My job, they were saying you're wasting all your money doing that stuff. But really, it's really cheap entertainment when you figure out how much it costs to, uh, I mean, local conventions anyway. Box trucks get demolished? Oh yeah, totally. I've driven a few for a couple different companies and they always get beat to crap. Just like a convention, it's like what, $60 for a weekend pass at whatever local convention? And that's relatively cheap entertainment considering like if you go, to a, if you go on a date to like a movie, and it's only, the movie lasts like an hour and a half. And it costs like 12 bucks per each person. People should not be allowed to drive U-Hauls like they need at least class B. So the neat thing is, um, like honestly, they really should. But those vehicles are specifically built not to fall into other classes. It's like U-Hauls are built to be at the absolute limit of a uh, class class C. So it's like what? Um, 12,000 pounds or 26,000 pounds, whatever it is. So like they literally designed the vehicle to be like one pound under the limit. 
so that you don't need the big the bigger license when really you're talking about a couple more pounds and then you need the bigger license less than 25,000 pounds yeah so that they design it to be just right at the limit and then I get another another hair over and it'd be, it'd be over and it'd be a class B these angry faces but it's just like the username <clears throat> I found him a happy place depends on the convention but yeah these lies my happy place just uh, doing chill stream Pickles? I have some pickles. I got three kinds of pickles in my fridge. Including those pickles I just got that I really don't care for. That'll probably end up being like grill dinner tomorrow. Probably bake pickles and brownies for dinner tomorrow you steal all your pickles don't do that I never saw her again we have come for your pickle wait wasn't that from like Spongebob and like he screamed See, I'm familiar with the memes. Oh my god, people got a reference. Yes. Not that I understood it, because I haven't seen the episode, but I've seen the meme. Out, the eyes are closing. You know, when I get too tired, I just end up falling asleep, dropping my phone. I just, my body just starts shutting down. I don't even get a chance to kind of like slowly nod off like I used to. It's just like it's just like a hard, choppy awake, asleep, wake, asleep. I'm starting to pass out. Blondie, hello, what? Y'all arguing in the comments. Can't let that happen, I must stay awake. Why? Watching somebody sew on stream? Maybe I can be an arts and crafts streamer on Twitch. Yes. Why aren't you asleep? It's what I am. It's only, uh, 10.30 here, so 22.30 hours. Depends where you are in the world. You got school in the morning? Who's, who's got school in the morning? I don't have school and I quit my job. I've got nothing to do. I mean, I gotta make stuff for my Etsy shop so I can make money. Captain Price, how are you? Uh, my back hurts, and I don't have a job, my truck won't start, and I'm in the parking lot sewing. So this is uh, kinda, kinda interesting where my life's gone. I mean, if you asked me 10 years ago, 
Or if you told me 10 years ago people would be paying for me to sew, I'd be like, no, my sewing's terrible. No one's going to be paying me to sew. That's absurd. But here I am, sewing tactical gear, and people are buying it. You're doing your best. Do you have an email to do e-transfers? Um, like PayPal and uh, Venmo and... What else is there? Cash App? Still a great content creator. Man, I used to have a lot of really awesome stuff on Facebook and it never got more than like 5,000 followers. But it turns out maybe we were all getting throttled. I thought I was doing pretty good. On next end to acrylics. Oh, I hate acrylics so much. Uh, plastic acrylic is so fragile and it shatters, or acrylic paints are so temperamental. Uh, I love oil-based paints a lot better than acrylic paints. Because, like, you put acrylic paints on fabric and it washes out and it kind of just stains. Or you put acrylic paints on cardboard or poster board and it flexes a little bit and they, they, they break. Or if you put it on a solid object and you knock it a little bit, it shatters. Well, like, oil-based paints, that doesn't happen. Like acrylic paints are for like cheap, one-time kind of arts and crafts. Like if uh, you're doing like a theater, you're doing a performance and everything's gonna get thrown away afterward. I go ahead and use acrylics just to get the paint on there. But that's like, I can't imagine using acrylic paint for anything else. Or like even like hobby stuff for like painting models and stuff. I use enamel rather than acrylic, it's terrible. Use acrylic paint for everything? Ugh. I can't. Wait, you quit your job? Yeah, like a week ago or so. I mean, I didn't technically quit, I just walked out. And I went back the next morning, grabbed some of my tools and left. Because uh, a coworker threatened to kill me because he thought I touched his toolbox, which I didn't. And the guy's been harassing me for about a year and doing weird stuff, just trying to annoy me. So I'm just like, yeah, you know what? I don't need to. I don't need some guy who thinks I touched his toolbox when I didn't coming after me. Give me my shit and gone. I didn't even take everything that's mine. I we saw a couple like tool bits like the uh like the hex bits for like the screwdriver bits do you put in uh power tools like I, I have a whole bunch of those over there it's like i'd bring in muffins for the for the company and he'd spot them and throw them away and then tell me that he threw them away it's like dude what the hell management doesn't help him out yeah i'm just like that guy should have been fired on the spot but he's, uh, it's a very small company, so he's too important to the company, and I expect for him not to be fired. So I'm like, ah, screw you guys. Feels jealous of me? Yeah. Uh, when he when he shooed me out, like when I was in a, in a month or two there, he's like, he's like, what, you're in the military, and you're an engineer, and you got a degree, and you're probably like the smartest guy here, and what the hell are you even doing here? Like, this, like you're doing a bullshit job, yada, yada, yada. And just like... Dude, I'm just like the lowest man in the totem pole, and I got a job that's supposed to last like a year or two. And I'm basically, you know, finishing the parts that he makes and cleaning up stuff. I'm just like, the job's a job. I need money to 
to push through my little private company business for Etsy to make more products, to make more money. So just like, I'm not there to outdo anybody. Just looking for a crap job to get by. My friend just told me to kilometers a second. You'll find better, you'll thrive. I mean, I like that spot because it's next to my storage unit, so it's really convenient. And there's a field behind it where I was filming all my TikToks. That was a really good spot. Uh, there's a swing, there's a paved area, there's a fire hydrant. A swing, yeah. Like, like all my TikToks for the last few months have been filmed there. Well, almost all of them. Yeah, kilometers a second. That's like uh, spacecraft speed. Sounds like he tried to throw hands with someone. Yeah. Uh, he was definitely trying to like walk by and purposely bump into me and not say anything. I'm just not interested in uh, fighting anybody. Because I know what the outcome is. Either I injure him or I unalive him and then I'm facing criminal charges. So it's like, I just don't want to fight anybody. Why we never use miles? A good idea to leave. I mean, I I would continue working there because it's a it's a crap job and it was quiet and I like to film in the field behind work. But I don't need somebody threatening to kill me over a crappy job. Like, I was in a machine shop where I saw two guys fighting. And then the next job, and they got a machine shop. You got a, the, um, the shop foreman. After, a few, I worked there for a few months. The shop foreman's like, hey, how do you think about this place? There's a lot of drama and a lot of crazy stuff going on, huh? And then I look at, like, the newest guy who was a welder. And I, and I say, um, actually, this is like the mellowest place I've ever worked. And he's like, what? Because, you know, so-and-so is arguing with this guy, and this guy disagreed with this guy. And this guy got upset, and there's this, there's this thing over here happening. And I was like, yeah, but, like, nobody spot each other. Nobody punched each other. I haven't seen any tools getting thrown. And he's like, what? Tools getting thrown? And then, like, the, the new guy, like, almost spat out whatever he was drinking because it's just, like, he started, like, laughing. I'm just like, yeah, man, just, like, I'm talking full-on wrench or hammer getting thrown across the shop overhanded, not underhanded toss, overhand throw, where somebody gets so pissed off at another person or at the equipment, they're straight on throwing a tool, like, it's flying through the air, then, boom, hits the wall or hits another machine. And he's like, you don't have that here. This place is pretty chill. And the other employee's like, yeah, you know, like, like no one here has gotten into a fight. Nobody's yelling at each other. I mean, that was a nice place to work. It was relatively clean. They're making a bunch of stuff for the Livermore Lab. So that was some pretty cool work. So we're making like a, so for the Livermore Labs, like park low accelerator, of course the lab's making a lot of their stuff themselves, but things that they couldn't make, they sent out. So like big format stuff, like really big parts. So a lot, we're making like a lot of brackets for the lab uh, for their park low accelerators. So like stands and brackets and standoffs 
and like railing and stuff. Most welders have the worst anger ever. Um, the welders that we had are pretty chill. I mean, it depends what you're welding. If you have to weld like TIG and aluminum, you need that patience. You need to be calm to make all those little circles. But if you're like stick welders, flux core, that's not a super chill job. I've seen a lot of those guys get pretty, pretty angry. They're trying to make me go to bed. You should go to bed. I've been talking a lot in chat too. Arguing with everybody. <laughs> yes, I'm a good boy. No need for that now. Uh-uh, go to bed, Peapot agrees. Yes, you should go to bed. Uh, I'm going to go to bed here soon myself. Maybe like, uh, what, 17 more minutes? I'll cut this hard time, 2300. I'll go to bed. I mean... Might as well finish up this last belt, or the second belt, and then uh, go to bed. I'll go to bed when you go to bed, and okay. It'll be soon. Yeah, I can't. I dated a welder who does stick. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about. It's it's the stick welders that are just like, Ur. I mean, I guess it depends on the industry you're in. If you're in uh, machine shops and fabrication shops, the which I've been in, the welders are all been chill, but that's because you're doing a lot of uh, MIG and TIG. Almost no stick at all. I don't even know if they have stick equipment, so they have to be kind of chill. Man, that's, that's pretty tight. That's not going in. I think I screwed up. But I guess if you're doing like... If you're building framing for like buildings... That makes sense because you're probably uh, just only doing stick work out there. There we go. You probably even heard that. Like if you're doing like uh, structural welding and you're doing stick, that kind of makes sense where they got a temper because you're basically a construction worker and you're welding for construction. Sierra November Alpha Papa. Snap. I mean, did you hear it snap? That might be too short for me to put a loop through it, but I'm gonna try. I work at the hospital here, it's always too busy. Yeah. I'm surprised that there aren't any hospitals that are like chill and slow. They're always, always packed. You want to be an animator for Disney? I mean, I've seen some of the Disney animations. Are you sure you want to do that? They're always putting lewd stuff in a, in a frame here or there like every freaking time. Maybe that's what you want to do. Hoist back the ER is always go, go, go. Yeah. I've tried to go to the ER a couple times, but just like, and I'm going to urgent care, getting a next day appointment. And I was like, but my arm is broken now. <laughs> Can't I see somebody? 
Uh, come on back in two days. I'm just like, ah! I mean, there was that one time I was injured in a hockey game. I went directly to the emergency room and they were able to x-ray me. You don't go to the VA hospital? I have not gone to the VA hospital, but also I haven't done the whole uh, VA thing and getting uh, your rating and all the rest of that. So I've been out for a few years and I haven't gone. Like I said, like my mom stole almost everything from me and I don't have my paperwork, I don't have my DD-214. Send her demand letters, send to my uncle, like, hey, I can't go to the VA hospital until I get my paperwork. You need to give me my paperwork. I stole my paperwork. Nothing. I can't imagine doing that shit to your kid where your kid's gone through the military and then you're dicking him over with their paperwork. Get the police involved. The police take her side because she's really good at lying. Can you take her to court at all? I've been suing her for six years. So much so that her brother, my uncle, is pissed off at me and telling me to stop suing her. And they offered me an out-of-court settlement offer. And I was like, that doesn't solve the problem. Money doesn't fix it. And the amount of money you're offering me isn't even enough to pay for the labor for me to get the stuff fixed. Good boy. Gulp. What? What? <sighs> Ooh, okay, 10 minutes. I'll cut the live. TikTok says, encourage your viewers to share your live and invite more friends. No, I'm going to go to bed soon. Well, that's terrible. Yeah. Not everybody uh, is cut out to be a parent, or even an adult, really. All right, good night, Jen. I'll follow up with uh, some sewing stuff and maybe uh, catch you in a uh, Discord or something. Sounds like a big time narcissist parent. Yes, she is. Uh, people have told me she's either a narcissist or and or borderline personality disorder. And unfortunately, a lot of the therapists out there uh, for narcissists, they're like um, for like a romantic partner. Like if your if your husband or wife is a narcissist, how to deal with them? Not that if your parent is a narcissist, how to deal with them? So that's like, it's like real little niche therapy kind of stuff. Not that I should have to go to therapy because my parents are narcissist, but um, at least it helps you understand things better. Been there, had to cut my grandparent out because of that. Yeah, and apparently narcissistic parents uh, not only abuse their children, but also their grandchildren. The abuse does not stop at a generation, they just continue it. brother has BPD and that sounds like her yeah my bio dad is narcissist only is it bad but it does sound close to your mom yeah okay so this one it's not entirely done because I only got a, I need a sharp pointy tool I not really so I got a two threads sewn across that, not three. And I put the the loop in to secure it into place so it doesn't go side to side. So I'm gonna come back later and sew that up. Probably not on the live, probably do this like inside somewhere. So almost got a second one done. I'm gonna cut the live in like eight minutes start packing up here. 
Chloe liked it live. My parents and grandparents are narcissists. Yeah, there's like an epidemic of narcissists. It might have been because of all the lead poisoning in the world. So a lot of boomers uh, got lead, or everybody got lead poisoning. So like a lot of people end up being narcissists. It's part of the uh, part of the lack of empathy kind of thing, you know, like those little all lead poisoning. I'll stay here for the eight minutes. Yeah, so I I read up on a lot of studies and watched a couple of YouTube videos about all the lead poisoning, which is uh, makes a lot of sense. It's really surprising. So, it's not just a meme. It's not just uh, an excuse. So, um, when gasoline was new and they're figuring out ways to make it mock less and make it run better and better octane, one of the solutions was putting um, an additive in where there is a there is lead inside of the molecule. So, it was trapped inside of that. So, it was thought that the lead wouldn't get out. But it did. And uh, so, like every gasoline engine out there had lead in the exhaust and it was getting out into the air and the air went all the way around the world so there's nowhere in the world that was not safe from lead poisoning the entire world got lead poisoning so there was an expedition to yeah so there's expedition to uh antarctica where guys were taking samples and there was there was lead contamination in antarctica so the guy's working on a completely separate project um, trying to find whatever else he was working on. I forget the specifics was it. But he traveled around the world and he was like everywhere he was going trying to find these samples on, on Earth. There's lead poisoning, even in places where there weren't people like Antarctica. And it's just like there's no, there shouldn't be any lead contamination in our Antarctica because there's no gasoline engines down there polluting the atmosphere. But the whole world just basically got coated in lead because of all the lead and gasoline. So every single person alive during the entire time period from like 1940-ish something all the way up until when the lead was banned. But even after that, like in the early 80s, like basically the whole world was poisoned with lead. Every single person got lead poisoning to different degrees. Mm-hmm. And that comes with lower IQs and more hostile behavior and less empathy and personality disorders like uh, narcissistic personality disorder and all sorts of other stuff. So, it was like a pandemic in other words. I mean, so like the, when the crime rates were going up in like the 60s and 70s and to lesser the point in the 80s, and now crime, overall, not in the last couple of years, but crime has been go, has been dropping in like the 90s and 2000s. It's basically because everybody that had been le- lead poisoned is getting too old to commit crimes nowadays. It's so like that entire crime way was basically just because that entire generation had lead poisoning, so they're more likely to commit crimes. So basically like the world's like basically returning back to a lower crime rate. And it has nothing to do with all these laws that are passed. It has everything to do with people with lead poisoning are now getting too old to commit crimes. So the, all the younger people are less likely to commit crimes. Lead poisoning is no joke. Yeah, I mean, it used to be a joke when I was a kid. Like, did you eat lead paint chips when you were when you, Did you eat paint chips when you were a kid? Did you eat leaded paint chips when you were a, chi- a kid? <laughs> As if if you ate paint chips, you'd be stupid. But wouldn't you have to be stupid to eat paint chips to begin with? Like, why would you just sit there and eat chips of paint? I'm just like, doesn't make sense. And also, leaded paint doesn't really chip that much. Because leaded, leaded paint's like smoother than oil paint. I mean, if, if like you just painted lead paint over top of crap paint, then I guess it, it would end up chipping off. Paint chips are good though. If anybody ever, if you ever find like leaded paint, like original in the can, like it doesn't expire, like that stuff's like good, like forever. And if you get an opportunity to paint with leaded paint, I recommend it because it is a pleasure. Like water-based paint is like kind of a pain to work with. 
um, but then like oil-based paint, it goes on really smooth by comparison to like water-based paint. Like leaded paint goes on even smoother than oil. It's like the next gap down. So if you get an opportunity to paint leaded paint, it's amazing. It's like the best thing for paint. But of course, be careful on the cleanup. Try not to touch it. And like, don't like, uh, put it on your tongue. Canned food, it's canned paint. Forced my brother to not eat wall insulation. Wouldn't it hurt? The forbidden cotton candy. Two minutes. I've sat in it before and ordered. To... Yeah, I've accidentally touched it a few times, and man, that's bad. Um, in nature, like stinging nettle. I don't know if you have that that stinging nettle plant anywhere near you. If you touch that thing, it's like uh, has little spines on it, kind of like pink insulation, but also as it poison and injects into you. It just burns and hurts and it's just like it's so bad I sat on that before and it hurts I mean, when I was younger I had some a couple close calls with fiberglass insulation and I definitely remember all that stinging Remembering to hug a cactus. Paige, no. If you know that meme. Or more like the adventure time where it's like he wants to hug the cactus. Okay, Boris, a cactus. I want to hug the cactus. No, don't, fam. You know, you know that text where every, everything everything is a blank if you're brave enough. And then Paige sent the text to her friend where it's like she's looking at her cactus. And then the response is, Paige, no! I found that page on Facebook and I sent her a message, but she never got back to me. Because I was able to find one of the memes where her last name wasn't censored. So I looked her up and I'm like, that's got to be her. It looks just like her. Your page, you're you're the page. You're the page from that text, with your friend and the cactus. I mean, the, I mean the odds of that happening are like just astronomical. That you'd be in my in my stream. How come you ever answer never answered my Facebook message? <laughs> no, it's Patrick. All right, it's 2300. I'm gonna clean up and go to bed. You ever have the urge to eat Play-Doh? I did a TikTok where I ate Play-Doh. Six, we go on dark.